Hello! This video will walk you through the Excel tasks learned in this module. Our objectives for this module are Demonstrate using basic functions of an Excel spreadsheet. Demonstrate basic formatting of a pre-existing spreadsheet. And identify basic Excel terms. This lesson will cover all of these objectives. Open the spreadsheet that is provided for, for you in Module 2. Here are some terms we will use when working with an Excel document. Columns appear vertically and are identified by letters. Rows appear horizontally and are identified by numbers. Cell intersection of a row and column and identified by a cell reference column letter row number active cell the cell that is highlighted or selected has a dark border formula bar appears directly below the ribbon and displays formula or text from the active cell range a selected group of cells all cells touch each other and form a rectangle worksheet a single sheet in a workbook a sheet may be more than one page workbook collection of related worksheets Let's go over how you would navigate and enter data in an Excel document. To move around the spreadsheet, use the Enter key to move down, the Tab key to move to the right, arrow keys to move up, down, left, or right, the Home key to return to the beginning of a row the control home key to move to the top left cell in the document the control end key to move to the last cell in a document and the page up down to move an entire screen up or down to change data in a cell you may edit replace or clear to edit Select the cell and press F2, or double-click the cell. To replace content, select the cell and type new data and press Enter. To clear content, select the cell and press Delete. Now we're going to start formatting this document. To widen a column, Click the two-sided arrow crossbar pointer on the right border of a column heading and drag. For this example, drag to a width of 12. To widen multiple columns to equal widths, select column headings and choose the Home tab the cells group format column width type a number and click OK for this example enter a column width of 15 to increase decrease row height place the pointer on the bottom border of a row heading click the two-sided arrow crossbar drag up down until the label reads the desired height. For this example, move to a row height of 87.
To increase multiple row heights to equal widths, select Row Headings. I'm holding the Control key as I select only the rows that correspond to months. When I need to scroll down, I release the Control key, scroll down, then press and hold the Control key before I select the rest of the rows. Before I move on here, I want to show you a time-saving step. Now that I have all these rows selected, I can give them a range name so that I can quickly select them again if I need to make future edits. With all the desired rows being selected, click the name box and type a one-word description. For this example, type months. Now hit the Enter key. If I deselect the rows, I can easily select them again by clicking the drop arrow after the box name and selecting the range name months. I'm going to do the same thing for the rows containing the weeks. I will name this range Weeks. Let's select the range named Months. Now right click any of the selected row headings and select Row Height. For this example, enter 23. This is now the time we're going to format the contents of the cells. First, we're going to cover the wrap text feature. To wrap text in a cell, select the cell, click the Home tab, Cells group, Format, Format Cells. On the Alignment tab, Click the Wrap Text checkbox and click OK. To align text in the cell, select the cells. Click the Home tab, Alignment Group. Click the Middle Align icon. Now click the center icon. Excel has several auto format selections. Select the cell. Click the Home tab, Styles group. Click the drop arrow below Cell Styles. Select Heading 1. Again, select the cells A2 through E4. Click the Home tab, Styles group, click the drop arrow below Cell Styles, select Heading 2. Because we previously named a couple of ranges, we can select the range name to format that range of cells. Click the drop arrow after the name box, select Months. Click the Home tab. Cell Styles, click the drop arrow below Cell Styles, select Title. Click the bold icon on the Home tab font group. Again, click the drop arrow after the name box. Select Weeks. Click the Home tab Styles group. 
cell, click the drop arrow below cell styles, select heading 4. Click the bold icon on the home tab font group. Let's continue to edit the content of the cells. To change the text orientation in a cell, select the cell, choose home tab, cells group, format, format cells, alignment tab. Within the orientation area, type a number in the degrees text box. To indent data in a cell, we are going to select the range named weeks. On the Home tab, Alignment Group, click the Increase Indent button three times. To center data horizontally across multiple cells, select the cells. Home tab, Alignment Group, click the Merge and Center button. This merges selected cells into a single cell. Again, select the cells, Home tab, Alignment Group, click the Merge and Center button. To add borders, select the cells, Home tab, Font Group, click the down arrow on the Borders button tab page. To add shading to a cell, select the cells, Home tab, Font group, Fill button down arrow, choose a color. You can add effects by right-click the selected cell, click Format Cells, select the Fill tab, click the Fill Effects button, make your selection, and then click on OK. Use the Format Painter to copy and paste the formatting to other cells.
to add currency formatting, select the cells, go to the Home tab, Cells Group, Format, Format Cells, Number tab, select Currency, and then click OK. To use predefined formatting options, select the range, then choose the Home tab, Styles Group, Cell Styles, and choose Total. To, f to finish this, I'm going to use the Format Painter again to shade every other row. Now we've completed formatting this spreadsheet. To finish this off, I would like to add a few formulas. To total a column or row of numbers, first select the cell where the total should appear. Type equals sum, open brackets, tell the computer which values you want summed by dragging through the cells. Be sure to end the range with a close bracket. Your formula should look like this. Equals sum, open brackets, B6 colon B64, close brackets, enter. To subtract one cell from another, select the cell where the answer should appear. Type an equal sign. Click on the first cell. Type a minus sign. Click on the second cell. Press Enter. This is called the point and click method. You can also just type the cell references. To copy or fill a formula to other cells, position the pointer on the bottom right corner of a cell border. The pointer should change to a plus shape. Dragging this pointer allows you to fill the contents of one cell to the adjacent cells. In this case, the formula was copied from one cell to the other.